Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Help break down wine, milk, and water. All right, read that. Joel chapter 3, verse 16. Uh-huh. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion uh -huh. and utter his voice from Jerusalem. Uh-huh. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. And the heavens and earth shall shake. All right, all these scriptures, Bishop, been going over the last two months. What time frame is this making reference to? Everybody can yell out, to be honest with you. The end times. There you go. The end times. All right. Read. And the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people uh -huh. and the strength of the children of Israel. Uh -huh. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion. So this, this, is, this is another precept that y'all can use showing you. Even in the last days, the Most High God is still going to be on the side of who? Israel. It's in the book of Joel. Read. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, uh -huh. dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strain there shall no strangers pass through her any more. Right, because it said that we know the the other nations ain't coming in through the gates. Y'all understand that, right? All right, read. Verse 18. And it shall come to pass in that day. In that day. Read. That the mountains shall drop down new wine, uh -huh. and the hills shall flow with milk, uh -huh. and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with water, uh -huh. and a fountain shall come forth out of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shittim. Uh -huh. Egypt, read all the way down first. Read. Egypt shall be a desolation. Read. And e Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. Edom being a desolate wilderness. All right. Edom being a desolate wilderness. When is that going to happen? Purple shirts can answer this one as well. Be, so that way we can solidify what time frame this is talking about, and it'll answer our question of going into the wine and the milk and the water. All right, let me hear Brother Moses. World War Three? Huh? Right. Okay. You got a scripture? No. All right. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's go to Obadiah 1, 21, real quick. Edom becoming a desolation or a wilderness. The desolate wilderness. Because we know when Edom is out the way, who was grabbing who was grabbing his heel? Huh? Jacob. Jacob. So if Edom becomes a desolate wilderness, who's ruling? We are. All right. Read that. One. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion. Saviors they shall come up upon Mount Zion. Zion. Who are the savior brothers? Philip Ben and I. The 144,000. 144,000. Those saviors are going to come upon Mount Esau. Read. And savior shall come up on Mount Zion uh -huh. to judge the Mount of Esau. To judge the Mount of Esau. Read. And the kingdom. And the what? And the kingdom uh -huh. shall be the Lord's. That's key. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. All right, the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Now, we just read up, up, up above, it said milk and water and wine. Let's go back to Joel. Joel, chapter 3, verse 19. Uh-huh. Egypt shall be a desolation. Uh-huh. And Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. Uh-huh. For the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Uh-huh. But Judah shall dwell forever. And Jerusalem shall from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. All right, so it says he's going to uh, cleanse the blood that I have not cleansed. That's going into letting the Lord have his vengeance. We know how to take vengeance. The most I going to deal with this. this. We can spend a lot of time in this. We ain't going <laughs> to, it's a lot. Joel's can good. I, can I bring some yes, quick? Yes, uh, Because in Obadiah it said uh, the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Go back to verse 16 real quick. Watch this. 
Joel 3.16. Joel chapter 3, verse 16. Come on. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. The what? The heavens and the earth shall shake. That heavens right there, that's going into the ruling nations. Okay? The heavens, heaven is going into what? What does heaven mean? Rulership. Heaven means rulership. So when he roars, that's going into the, the rulers, the presidents, the prime ministers, all these nations. No, they're not going to be ruling no more. How do we know? That precept in Obadiah to show that he's going to take the kingdom. Now, there was another question. I'm going to just get it out of the way. Go to Revelations 12 and 7. Let me get it out of the way real quick. Okay, Revelations chapter 12, verse 7, tying into what the captain's uh, going over. Read that. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. Come on. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Remember, the heavens shook. So what is it saying right here? This is the heaven shaking, the war in heaven, meaning what? The war for rulership. Y'all see that? Oh, did they see it? Who with me? Say I. Raise your hand. Oh, that's oh, <laughs> no, for real. Let's try it one more time. I want to make sure everybody, 100%. All right? We won't shoot 50%. We'll shoot 100%. Let's, let's go back to uh, Joel 3.16, and then we're going to go to Revelations 12 and 7. Okay? Watch this. Joel chapter 3, verse 16. Come on. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion uh -huh. and utter his voice from Jerusalem. Come on. The heavens... And the earth shall, shall shake. Because when we read Matthew 24, and let me go to it, show you something real quick. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 27. Watch this. Matthew chapter 24, verse 27. Matthew chapter 24, verse 27. Watch this. For as the lightning cometh out of the east mm -hmm. and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You see that thing? So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Meaning what he roared from where? Jerusalem. Where's that at? The east. It's showing you where he's going to come. He said when he come back, he's going to do what? He's going to shake the heavens. Meaning what? He's going to rattle these other nations. That's what it's going into. Okay? As try to make it as plain as possible. Now read Joel again. Joel chapter 3 verse 16. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, we got to read down. Let's go back to Matthew. We yes, got to read down. Make it even easier. Watch this. Matthew chapter 24, verse 28. Come on. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. That's going into us being gathered unto Christ, the Messiah. Read on. Verse 29. Come on. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. What's that tribulation going into? Our captivity by the hands of the other nations. So immediately after that's done, come on. Shall the sun be darkened, mm -hmm. and the moon shall not give her light. Read. And the stars shall fall from heaven. Read. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. You see that? And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So now let's go to Revelation 12, 7. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Come on. And the dragon fought in his angels. So what is that going into? Exactly. That's going into what? Christ taking back the kingdom. He's going to shake the heavens, all of the European nations, all the ruling nations. No, that war is going to be when Isaiah 47, when he comes back and they try to fight him Independence Day. Y'all familiar with that, right? When they try to fight the alien invasion, that's going into this right here. That's the wars, the shaking of the heavens right here. All right, read it again. Very good. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. Read. And prevailed not. Come on. Neither was there, neither was there place found any more in heaven. Uh-huh. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Who was responsible for deceiving the whole world? Esau. Esau, because he is the devil. That's what it's calling right there. The white man's the devil. That's the precept. Because he is responsible for deceiving the whole world. Meaning what? He has no more place in rulership any longer. All right? So read verse 18. Joel. Joel, chapter 3 and verse 18. Uh-huh. 
And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drop down new wine, uh -huh. and the hills shall flow with milk. Now, when it says the hills shall flow with milk, does milk come out of hills? No. So it's showing you, it's giving you a, a things that are happening. Go back to what Cap said in the curses. All right? During captivity, during captivity, the land didn't bring forth what it was supposed to. The animals don't, don't nothing happens the way it's supposed to. When we in rulership, these things will be at full force. All right, read. And it all the rivers. And the hills shall flow with milk, uh -huh. and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters. Uh -huh. And a fountain shall come forth out of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shittim. Go to Exodus 3 and 8. Because all of those, they always go together. Milk, honey, it's oil, it's wine. Water, all of those go together of prosperous when things are good. Read that. Exodus 3 and 8. Yep. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 8. Uh-huh. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. The hand of the Egyptians. The Egyptians are what? They, they, what, what uh, position are they? Right. They were ruled. They were our captors. They were our oppressors. So it comes a time when he's going to deliver us out of the hand of our oppressors. Read. And to bring them up out of that land. Unto bring them a, out of that land. Very similar to today. Read. Unto a good land. Unto a good land. Read. And a large. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Right. A land flowing with milk and honey. Telling you I'm taking you from a place of servitude into a place of rulership. Go to Exodus. I mean not Exodus. Second Exodus. Chapter 2 and verse 10. Second Ezra 2 and 10. Let's read a little faster. We're going to read all the way to night, verse 19. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 10. Uh-huh. Thus said the Lord unto Ezra, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem. The what? The kingdom of Jerusalem. The kingdom of Jerusalem. The kingdom, Jerusalem, the same thing. One and the same. Read. Which I would have given unto Israel. Uh -huh. Their glory also will I take unto me and give these the everlasting tabernacles, which I have prepared for them. Uh -huh. They shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savor. Uh -huh. They shall neither labor nor be weary. Uh -huh. Go, and ye shall receive. Pray for few days unto you that they may be shortened. Uh -huh. The kingdom is already prepared for you. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Read. Watch. Uh-huh. Take heaven and earth to witness, uh -huh. for I have broken the evil in pieces and created the good, uh -huh. for I live, saith the Lord. Right, so the, going also the exact opposite of what we read earlier. What do we read in Joel 1 about um, the vines? What was happening to them in, the, in, the, in the, uh, the field? The curse, it was a curse that we read. What was happening? Right, it was being ate up. Read verse, um, verse 14 again. Take heaven and earth to witness, for I have broken the evil in pieces. Right, he don't broke the evil in pieces, so those things won't happen anymore. Read. And created the good, for uh -huh. I live, saith the Lord. Read. Mother, embrace thy children and bring them up with gladness. Uh -huh. Make their feet as fast as a pillar, uh -huh. for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. Read. Verse 16. And those that be dead will I raise up again from their places. Right. That's what uh, Bishop was going over last week as well. Those that are already sealed, they'll be raised up again. Read. And bring them out of the graves, for I have known my name in Israel. Read. Fear not, thou mother of the children, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. For thy help will I send my servants, Esai and Jeremiah. And, and Jeremiah. Read. After whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee, Twelve trees laden with diverse fruits. Read. And as many fountains flowing with milk and honey. Mountains flowing with what? Milk and honey. Uh-huh. And seven mighty mountains, whereupon these, these grow roses and lilies, whereby I will fill thy children with joy. So, this is going into what? What time period? The kingdom, right? Rulership, milk, honey, water, Ezekiel 47. Let's deal with the water real quick. We got the milk and the honey. Let's deal with the water. You know what? Go to Sirach 15 and 3 first. 
Sirach chapter 15 and verse 3, dealing with the water. And like Cap just brought out, water is twofold. There's physical water because the land will be prosperous, and then there's a spiritual water. What's the spiritual water? The word, the understanding, right? All right, good. Read that. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 15 and verse 3. Uh-huh. With the bread of understanding. With the bread of understanding. Shall she feed him uh -huh. and give him the water. Give him the what? The water uh -huh. of wisdom to drink. Right, the water of wisdom to drink. Why? Because we're going to finally get the understanding of the scriptures at a higher level than we ever had before. We ain't going to read Ezekiel 47. But when you read it, it talks about the water rising, the understanding of the scriptures rising. Go to Hebrews 8 and verse 10. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. Uh-huh. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. I will put my laws into their mind Read. and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, uh -huh. and they shall be to me a people. Read. They shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Right. Why will we not have to teach our neighbors? the laws will be in our hearts and right. our minds. Right, it'll be sealed. The understanding will be there. All of us going to have the same understanding. Everybody going to be on the same page. That's why we read in Joel 3 and 18, it says the water is going to be flowing. The water is going to be flowing. Uh, Luke 24 and 32. Luke 24 and 32. Luke chapter 24, verse 32. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? When Christ returns, we're going to be in his presence. He's going to open up our understanding. What do we read in Sirach 15? What was the understanding compared to? Water, the water of wisdom. It's the same thing, the same thing. All right, so when you read Joel 3 and 18, that's just going into those three things. Let's get into understanding, the land bringing back the fruits, and prospering the way it was supposed to be from the beginning. Because when you read Deuteronomy 28, there was blessings and curses. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision the tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.